So we're going to be doing a very, very wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, beautiful analysis of my gameplay here as my plate just drops on top of my desk. Uh, but basically that's a gameplay where we're going to be focusing on a sort of art of war such as, well, um, self-reliance, I would describe it in that sense, and desperation. And in this gameplay, it's a pretty typical gameplay on the start, we're just kind of going for the gun and screwing people with no guns right here, like the snake would. We're going to be rotating around, checking, using our ears, as we can see that zombie actually dies, there's a guy up there somewhere. That guy died, that went from the right side, he went left, he can push back out, so we're going to play it slow, he might have a close range, I think. So we're just going to play that slow, the zombie is following him, so he's inside here, of course. We're taking shots. now. On this end, if the zombie isn't there, it's a bit nicer, because then you can actually follow. But because the zombie is there, I didn't follow him, and he kind of got away. On this side, we're going to be looping around, kind of staying on the outskirts, because I have no ammo. So, we're basically going to be avoiding the whole middle of cell house, until I find a gun, which I have here. And after this, we're looking for more people to kill. Usually this original style of the start of the game is just for the kills, just for beautiful, beautiful, beautiful merits. Nowadays I wouldn't play like this because I already have the merits I need. This guy I heard on the side, so I'm gonna kill. Right here I see my teammates in danger, I will not heal, I need to neutralize the threat right there. I have a perfect angle on him and his gun cannot reach me, meaning that basically I have no chance of dying and a free kill is waiting me there. Now when I looted that bag I took the armor first because there's actual zombies on me, so that was needed. So basically, up until this point, the game is pretty standard, just a normal uh, get as many kills as possible, get as many merits as possible game. But it changes eventually right here. As you can see, we actually have three people. We started with four, but one guy had to go. And soon we're going to drop down to two. And that basically means that my value and worth of the team is about 50%. And we'll go into that a bit later. Uh, the choice to go for a level two there was uh, pretty obvious. I have uh, armor repair, so it's fine. As you can see, our teammate is actually dropping me loot because he's going to go here. He had really bad ping, so we needed to restart the modem. So that happened. This, we're not going to actually peak. Our armor is too weak, meaning that the health and danger of our thing is not too... You know, it's not too worrying. Right there, I chowed him because he was shooting my teammate. I wanted to get a trade. Okay. Over here, we picked up the armor because we're too vulnerable. A double chow could be coming from that staircase there. Oh, so that's the main way so I'm going to be looking. Right here, I know there's a guaranteed another guy, so I'm using my teammate kind of as a pawn and as bait. So over here, this is the last guy here that I need to neutralize. I wait a bit to just get a grasp of where he went with my ears, and he went to the left, so I destroy him with his fury. Now, I'm going to be locking out these. This is actually one of the main connections to the side of the map, and that will basically screw people from the roof, screw people from the middle, and people coming from the side here, so we'll lock out a lot of the movement here. After this point, I will practically not be moving too much into the middle of the cell house. Eventually I'll realize that <laughs> uh, my life is valued too much. With the loot I have, if I die, then it's going to be rest in peace. That situation, the brawler is the only way, I need to heal fast. I'm going to re-peek because that guy is actually getting um, another guy shooting him. And he already shot me from the top, meaning that he probably respawned with pistols, meaning that he has no armor, so my fear will do a lot. And at this point, I kind of realized that, yeah, that was a bit too close, so from this point, we're going to be playing slightly more safer. I'm trying to do the head glitch there, but it's failing, so I give up. And over here, we're going to be just doing the skulkers, making sure people cannot hear us. As you can see here, I'm following one guy. From here, I can hear him looting below me, so I fasten up, because I don't really want him to loot you know, armors and shit like that. He's right in front of me, a very easy kill, I shoot him in the back. Roller him for the health. Now here, we're going to go back and go back again, kind of a peak right here, we're going to screw the guy from behind. The reason I went back and forth was just to see if another guy would shoot me and just make sure other violent, like things wouldn't happen. Another line of sight could have been opened and maybe that guy would have like, pushed me and it would be a really easy kill. So that was not a bad idea. Pushing straight away there is fine, but it might lead you open. Here, in this case, you have a barricade. I'm going to switch to reds because I need to self-preserve myself. I'm the last alive here, so reds will be much better. I have consumer, so whites would have been fine. 
That guy I'm not actually going to be peeking. He was on the head glitch. If I try and screw him, he might screw me over. So I'm going to ignore that gunfight just to preserve my life. I do know he's there, so I'm going to return and just check if I have a better opportunity. I do right there, and I screw him over there. There's one more guy behind him. I'm not too worried. Here, we're going to switch to the whites because we don't need too much health. We're going to re-peek and re chow him. That guy is weak, so he's either going to run away or he's going to hide somewhere. In this case, he ran away, but he got crossfired by another guy. In here, we have a lot of loot, so we're going to start looting. The other team will come soon for this loot, like they do here. I'm not pocking uh, the consumer twice because it will screw my slots. We're gonna follow. We're confident. Uh, basically, I saw that this guy backed off in a way. And it's really one guy here, so it, it won't be a big deal. That guy I just heard. Pretty easy kill there. And we're just kind of patrolling the outside. And again, the idea is we're gonna be going around the edges. Not getting into actions where we can open ourselves to too many lines of sight and too many possibilities but just enough so we can actually get kills we don't want to play it too safe because if you play it too safe you lose map control and if you lose map control uh, well you lose power over some sight lines and lanes up here we're going to be following this guy most likely weak from the barricade he jumped down so he's going to take full damage here about 10 right here he is we're going to heal off of him as well from there it was a grenade, that actually came from the other side. I don't have long range, so we're just going to kind of stay here, check the situation. I want to get rid of the zombie because it uh, annoys me with pit markers here. We're going to be sliding out. That slide will screw with my hitbox, his aim assist, um, and also timing. Uh, right here in the situation, Corpo is very difficult to revive, so I'm going to use him as a pawn. He realizes that as well, so he kills himself. Uh, he loses the loot, but I have a much freer ability to do anything else I want. These zombies are going, so there must be another guy here. That is what's crossing my mind. I usually the direction the zombies are going, and if it's especially away from me, it means there's another guy here. Now, the guys I killed, they most likely will come back, so I'm kind of preparing. Right here, I'm just patrolling the area. The reason I'm moving so much is just to make sure that these guys can't guess exactly where I am. If you stay in the same place, people will just redeploy you and screw you. As you can see, that was the same guy we just killed before. Rom pom pom. So he came back again. It'll be much harder for him to find you if you move location. Especially if you move location to a place overlooking his bag. That is probably the best idea. Right here, Corporal actually got shot, so I'm looking where that where he got shot from. Well, we see him. We're going to click an 8 because I have no long range. We're going to click to 4. It hit, but it didn't actually kill him. My Winter's Fury did the rest, so that was fine. I need 9 kills, and I'll probably be happy. You got ammo? For the Fury? After this point, the yeah. self preservation part is game will probably be over and me and Corporal will start pushing out a cell house to docks. So after this point it's just a rollover fest just trying to go for as many kills as possible. The idea behind playing so safe in that cell house and maybe not taking all the chances was literally because I had so much loot and I knew if I did lose this loot coming back with a pistol back to cell house especially when you only have one teammate who can only watch one lane at a time especially if your teammates only got a pistol then it's a rest in peace. Here we're going to actually push this. I know there's a guy here because I saw him earlier. So that's easy. The guy's shooting me from the left, so I'm going to head glitch this. I'm going to see where he is. This is going to be a main push. I know he doesn't have armor and he played the worst play he could have done. If he wanted to kill me, he should have held something, held the head glitch, held the top. Made sure I uh, didn't have so much space to move to him. After this point, we're going to be moving to docks, just going for the rest of the kills. All I need is six, so it's doable, definitely. As you can see, I'm playing a bit more reckless now. It doesn't really matter if uh, I die or not. It's the end of the game, so I trust Corpo in maybe even winning the game for me. Most teams at this point won't be full, and if they are, yeah, I'll be able to take at least maybe one of them out, so I'm confident in my abilities. I still have my brawler, so I'm very confident in these actual lower portions, but from after this point, when I lose it, I think I'll take a bit more precautions when moving. Just wipe a solo. Okay, there's 
one here on the second floor. Now that guy must have actually dropped to the balcony. This means he can either go up to the roof or stay on that balcony. Most likely he should go to the roof, that'll be the correct position. This guy didn't actually go and he stayed on this balcony. Which then was very easy for me to find him. He went into this room. Probably to camp, but sadly for him he was destroyed. I could actually hear his boyfriend coming, so that was very nice. And the guy behind me is in the docks. If he exposed himself, I have the high ground, meaning that I can actually destroy his life. He's head witching right there, but he had no armor. So a re-peek and a constant ego chowder was not a very good idea. He should have just actually let me be there and maybe even rotate to the middle of the zone. I'm going to switch the VMP out. Uh, because That's itself the VMP uh, kind of interchanges the same role as the Fury. From here I'm gonna take it slow, I'm kind of baiting some shots. I know from the angle that this zone is in, um, if I get shot once, usually the second shot won't land, because I can just drop out of that little ledge to the balcony. You wanna kill me? Then you do that. Shoot me in the ass from the corner, every time you'll kill me. From here I'm just taking the high ground and watching over, Maybe. looking for the people. It's literally one guy left, but this guy really loves yeah, to camp. Exactly. I'm pushing this like it you. more outer portion yeah, first. What the hell is this? He's in water, my water. And there he is. It's because usually people who are alone don't go to the middle. They usually end up on the outer sides with a lot of cover. And they kind of wait for you to go into the middle so you can be easy prey. You sort of want to go around, make sure that's safe. Well, that's basically it for the gameplay, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, this video was made for my beautiful friend Corpo, but for now, I shall see you another time.